Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm taking the chair tonight. Taking the old school setup. How many of you remember this old school setup? I used to be just me. Now, this was back in the other room, though, where I had my little bar top behind me, and that's it. Now, now we got the wall. It's beautiful. Hope you guys are doing well. Good to see you. Happy Wednesday. A lot of you here. Thanks for coming in. Anthony Orlando, Charles Ashworth, Christopher David. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Andrew Buchanan here early, as always. Brothers of the Dram, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you in a live stream. JJ, hmm, got the Elijah Craig B520 and the Old Forester 1920. <sighs> All right. Two away, two away, and you're gonna have, you'd have the whole lineup here, too. Mike Loomis, how are you? Love the chair setup, Chris says. <laughs> yeah, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. It's more relaxed. It's more chill. I feel like it's easier for me because I got two monitors here that I can just talk to you guys back and forth. I can see things better when I'm at my table normally. It's like, it's a challenge. My eyes don't work like they used to. <laughs> we got a lot of whiskey ahead of us tonight. What are you guys sipping on? Hmm? You guys got something poured already too? You can try to set up a blind as well. William Harvey, Cool Runnings, how are you? Good to see you. Um, so I decided tonight, let's do a repeat of my final four, my Battle of Bourbons. So I just finished my Battle of the Bourbons series, had my final four, and I figured let's do a repeat tasting because I say all the time, like, depending on what you ate during the day, what you did during the day, order you try whiskeys in, um, it all makes a difference in what the outcome is, I think. So um, during the actual episode, I chose Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Not not a big surprise. Not a big surprise. Um, but so it could happen again tonight, too. That's one of my favorite whiskeys. It really is. So we'll see. We'll see. But I figured it'd be fun to do a repeat just to see if anything changes. Because I know for me, depending on my mood, you know, I'm in the mood for different whiskeys. So Whiskey Crusaders. Matt, how you doing? Good to finally see you. Actually get to join the stream tonight. No karate for the kids. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming in. Have a pour. Have a pour. Uncle Buck, how are you? Terry Coast, good to see you. Um, in with the Stag Junior 2019, Monte Cristo Stick. Nice, very nice. Sounds like a good night to me. Now, my final four was just four whiskeys, right? You can see there's five behind here. So what I did is I had Mrs. Bourbon saying, choose any barrel proof off my bar. Now this could be included in the 16 I chose for the Battle of the Bourbons or anything separate. As long as it said barrel proof, cast strength, full proof, Something. Something to indicate it's barrel proof. Um, I told her she could put it in here. So the fifth one's going to be a, a wild card. You know, I, I don't know. So I don't know. I have a lot of just random sample bottles sitting around that could say barrel proof or cast on she could have put it in here. So I, I really don't know what it's going to be. But either way, that'll be a, a little little more fun for me, I think. Wheels, how are you? Good to see you, Wheels. Greer Crabtree, how are you? Uh, all right, let's... Um, these have already been shuffled. But you can see behind me, these are the at least four that are in here. I don't know the rest. So I'll go ahead and shuffle these again. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't the ideal setup. This is why the table's better. Because this isn't an ideal setup like doing this. That's why the table's better, you know. So. All right, that's good. I don't know what. I don't know what's what. These have been poured for like 15, 20, 25 minutes. So, you know. Charles Ashworth, how are you? Good to see you. I've got bad coffee <laughs> and a cigar. Nice. Oh, man. Okay. All right. It's going to be a barrel proof night. Stay Junior wins tonight, Brett says. It's possible, man. I'm telling you. You know, now that you say Stay Junior, too, I, I should, you know. I say this every time I do a blind tasting. Like I'm not gonna guess whiskeys. I'm not gonna guess to sell. I'm not gonna guess any of that. I'm just gonna go by what I like most. You know, you can't put it in your head that it might be something because then you you throw yourself off. Jason, how are you doing, man? Jason says, "What up, buddy? Hope you're feeling okay after this." <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, man. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, Jason has been on YouTube almost two years. Like his two year anniversary is very recent now soon coming up already passed sorry sorry but it, it's now so he's celebrating tonight so immediately after this at nine o'clock 
he's going to have a whole bunch of people on. And um, from in the second hour, uh, he's going to be doing a, like hosting a blind, not really a, a blind tasting, but he's going to be hosting a tasting of um, whiskeys in a good lineup. So I'm looking forward to that. As long as I'm coherent after this, I should be able to jump on at least for the first hour with Jason. So it'll be a good time. Congrats, man, on, I mean, really congrats on um, two years. That's big time. It takes big commitment, you know, in the whiskey game. It really does. There's a lot of cherry in this coming through for me. Heavy cherry. A lot of sweetness, too. Sweet, sweet cherry. Woo! First pour of the night. It's a pallet, pallet punch. Patrick Fulmer, how you doing? Good to see you. Nick, good to see you. Just got home from work, checking in. Cheers. Cheers, man. Thanks for coming in. Pour yourself a nice dram, would you? Take a seat. Guy Davis, I know I saw you were cooking dinner earlier. Hope you're doing well, too. This is good. This is good stuff, man. This is like absolute sugared cherries is what this tastes like to me. Mm. Second sip mellowed out. You know, first sip of the day, especially at Barrel Proof. It's going to take you back, but man, man, that's some good stuff. I actually did bring pen and paper just for my own notes. Just for my own notes. Um, cherry sugar. That's how we're starting out the tasting notes tonight. Cherry sugar. I like it. I like it. So, you guys all been having a good week? Halfway through the week. Hump day! No work for me tomorrow. That's exciting. Um, so that means we can go a little hard on the whiskey tonight if we need to. If we need to. You know, I got I got two hours to go. So, um, with, Jay, with, with Jason, of course. So. Jordan, how you doing? First pour of the night was blind. I don't know. It's one of these four or a fifth wild card. So I don't know. Not sure, honestly. Mmm. All right. Ooh, it's so hard for me not to guess. Okay, so if anyone's doing a blind right now or just experiences with blinds in general, like I find for me, it's really hard for me not to try to guess distillery mash bill you know like that type of stuff it when i try to just look at it as okay is what is better than the other whiskey like i can't do it I, that's why like if i if i'm gonna do that i have to force myself to drink like out of a rocks glass or something where i'm not gonna be feeling like i have to analyze the whiskey because it's just habit at this point for me to want to like oh i think you know i want to i want to know what this whiskey is i want to figure out what this whiskey is I don't know. I don't know. Always a student in the whiskey game. This is very nutty. So nuttiness is the first one that jumps out for me on this. Almost like a dry roasted peanut. Um, not a huge amount of sweetness, really, on the nose. Blinds are very difficult, Jordan. You're correct. Blinds are very difficult. This helps because I know at least what the four whiskeys are, you know, I don't know the order of course, but um, it's not a complete blind, you know. I think blinds are difficult, but I think it, it really is, for me, some of the most fun I've had doing episodes, doing live streams, because you don't know what you're drinking. You know, you may be so confident in the notes you're calling out, and then at the end you find out something completely different. And like when blinds are sent to me, and I get to do those, that's even more of a challenge and even more fun because it's really, really hard. Greer says, yeah, I suck at blind tasting. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right, man. Like the most fun is like setting up, having your friends over or going to friends' houses and setting up blinds with them. Like that's the most fun I've had doing blinds, honestly. Because then if I'm the only one that knows and they don't know, it's really fun to hear what they're picking out, you know, and some, some of them are really good. I mean, some of them are really good at picking out the, these notes, you know. It's honestly just experience. Like, the more you drink, it's weird to say, but, like, the more you drink, the more you do blinds, the better you get. 
It is. It's like anything else in life. I think I can pick the whiskeys from your descriptions. Well, I, I could be wrong, though, too. So, in general, you have an idea what these whiskeys should taste like. If you've watched reviews, if you've had them yourself. So, yeah, if, if I'm picking the notes out properly, then maybe. But the wild card, that's what... We all need to together try to figure out what this wild card is, okay? All I know is it's a barrel-proof bourbon, is what I told her. Barrel-proof bourbon. So... I don't think one of these first two is the wild card. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, Jordan says, I just like it because I have a hunch what I like what I like better, but then the blind confirms it. And that's true because you may think you love something and then you do it blind and you're like, ooh, I didn't like that that much after all. Or this $25 whiskey is way better than this $60, $70 whiskey, which is awesome. It's better that way. Yeah, dry roasted peanut on this. Um, not a huge amount of oak, not a huge amount of sweetness. It's really weird. It just nuts are jumping out. And the bottle that I think this might be is on the very heel, the very he heel of the bottle. So it could be, could be reaching that point where it starts to change a little bit. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Well, some dusty oak took over on that now. Not as much that luscious creamy oak, more like that dusted. Think of like a dusty old Rick House, you know, and you, you take a little whiskey right out of that old barrel. Nuts are jumping out, Ben. You, you got that right. <laughs> Anthony says, just picked up my first B520 and Will It Rye today. Nice. So Will It, will it Rye, I'm still seeing the four years everywhere. I mean, they've got to be putting out a five year, right? Soon. I would think. I don't know. I don't know. Seems like it to me. That's a good whiskey too. One and two are both really good whiskeys. This is... I mean, this, this lineup's loaded, so none of these are going to be bad whiskeys, I don't think. All right. All right. Let's go to... Shampoo number three. Well, this is very dull on the nose. Um, not much jumping out. Not huge bourbon notes, really. I mean, weird to say because it's got to be a bourbon, but for a barrel-proof bourbon, you know, usually it'll jump right out of the glass, especially with the top was just on. I'm having to bury my nose in there, and it's like it's a lot of. Seems like a lot of alcohol burn, honestly, like ethanol burn. Hmm. This could be the wild card. This could be the wild card because I don't remember this nose on any of those four. You know, there's citrus on this. Um, honestly, a kind of a fresh, fresh fruit note. I want to say like peach pear, but it's corn, like farm, farm fresh corn too. <laughs> When I say that, it's more like youthful whiskey notes. You know, farmy corn, dusted corn, and a little bit of alcohol burn. I think this has got to be a little younger. Whatever this is, got to be a younger whiskey. Seems to be, at least, on first, first impression. Hmm. New riff. New Riff, I would agree because of the age, but at the same, New Riff, I usually get a distinct rye spice, like rye bite, because New Riff uses a high rye mash, but like I think it's around 30, 35% rye in their bourbon. This rye is not coming through on this. I'm not getting a huge rye note. I will have all the whiskey, please, and thank you. <laughs> Kilko, how are you? Good to see you. New it could be it could be new riff. Ah, um, Cletus says, do you know if Traverse City whiskey barrel proof is a oh, barrel proof wheat is MGP or their own distillate? I believe that is their own distillate. Um, four year, four year weeded, their own distillate, and they're starting to do that with the the regular barrel proof as well. Their own distillate, 
the older like store picks you'll find of Traverse City whiskey are they're they're still MGP. You know they're still MGP. Yeah, I'm not getting a lot of rye spice on this. Nope. Hmm. That's a maple. Maple came through on that. Hmm. Maple, little bit of oak. Again, not a huge, not a huge bourbon punch, bourbon explosion. I expect from a barrel proof. You know, a little bit underwhelming. A little bit underwhelming. We'll see. Well, let's give it a chance, guys. Let's give it a chance. Let it come. We'll come back. Whiskey Ride the Bourbon Guy. How you doing? Good to see you. And Robot Scott. How the heck are you? I haven't seen you, Robot. Good to, good to see you in here. Um, oh, my gosh. I was just going to tell you guys something, and then I totally forgot. I don't know. We'll think of it. Make sure you drink plenty of water. Stay hydrated. Today was so hot out. I mean, I was working all day, but when I got out of work, it, like, it was one of those days where you walk outside, it's just like, <gasps> take, like, took your breath away from the humidity in the air and the heat. Can't even, can't even do it. Can't even do it. Too much. Um, what do we got? Four now? Four? Yeah. This one, again, again, not giving me a huge amount of explosion. Explosion. It's got some chocolatiness, though. Anthony, thank you so much, man. $5 super chat. Pikesville Rye or Will It Four Year? What's your favorite? Oh. That's a tough question because I like them both for different reasons. Um, lately, when I've been going to the Will It Four Year, I'm getting more youth. Like I'm tasting the youth come through more. But the like, if you want that explosion of mint, dill, um, and you love that dill forward rye, it's it's really good. I mean, it's still really really good. One of the best four years out there, you know. Um, Pikesville is just for the price. I don't know if there's a better value rye for bang bang for your buck. What you're getting in the bottle, I don't I don't know if there's a better one out there. Age proof price. Can you think of one that holds that consistent as Pikesville does in the rye category? Old Forester rye, maybe for age proof price. We don't really know the age, but Pikesville's pushing. I mean, it's not pushing barrel proof, but it's, it's up there towards barrel proof. So still haven't tried the rare breed rye. So once I try that, I will give my opinions on it, but I'd say most days, if I'm looking for just a classic rye, I'm going to go for Pikesville. But but if you want something unique that's going to slap you around a little bit, I think Will It Rye is a great option too. Personally. Personally. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. What about you, Anthony? Which one's your favorite? Oh, you said uh, Pikesville. You love loving Pikesville, waiting for the Will It to open up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jake Miller. How you doing? Happy Wednesday. Hmm. Woo! Did not think that was that hot until I um until the finish came in a little bit. Hmm. Then I got some heat. Got some heat. I'm gonna take another sip of that. I think. That, for some reason shocked the palate a little bit. Knob Creek's double rye was really good. Interesting. Did I have? I was I had at a bar I tried one of those weird expressions like quarter cask or double rye or whatever the heck else Knob Creek had. Can't remember which one it was, but the one I had I was not impressed with. I know that doesn't help at all for <laughs> deciding what whiskey you want because I can't remember. I probably had quite a bit to drink at the time too, so. Michter's rye, no slapping involved. Good point, Terry. Good point. Michter's barrel proof rye, rye, that's one that's delicious. That is one that's delicious. I love Michter's barrel proof rye. And if you can find the toasted barrel barrel proof rye from Michter's, game changer. Absolute game changer. Twice barreled rye. I think that is the one that I, Peter White, the one that I tried. And I was not impressed. I think. 
I don't know. I, I can neither confirm nor deny the question. Everyone's saying Rare Breed Rye was phenomenal. Now, I think it's hit locally, so I just got to find a bottle or go get a bottle, you know. Dicky Dad, how you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> when is the bourbon saying Whiskey Chew ASMR channel starting? <laughs> the old Whiskey Chew, huh? Mm. Roy MC says, I got the Knob Creek single barrel store pick for $35. Unreal. Florida, when I was in Florida on vacation like a year ago at this point, same thing. It was $29.99. It had to have been mispriced. Had to have been mispriced. $29.99 for both the Woodford Double Oak and the Knob Creek single barrel reserve. Just, just the shelf, Knob Creek single barrel reserve. But still, it was so cheap I had to pack it in my luggage on the way back just because... Here it's 52, 52, 53, 60 for the wood for double oak or right around 55, you know. William Harvey has been drinking too hearted for two hours. Do I have one more? Or do I switch to Knob Creek? Too hearted for two hours. Now the question is how many two hearted did you have for two hours? Did you have a six pack of two hearted or did you have like one two hearted an hour? Because that will, that will answer the Knob Creek question. Why not both, man? I'll tell you what, um, a nice IPA with a glass of whiskey, you know, sipping side by side, good stuff. Go for it. Yeah, um, four. Oh, that's kind of right in the middle, man. Kind of right in the middle. I'll always say go for whiskey. You know, if you're feeling good, go for whiskey. Beer before whiskey, or beer before, what is it, beer before, <laughs> beer before liquor, never been sicker. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. Not when it comes to whiskey. Whiskey is safe all the time. Yeah, 42 and, and Guy, I, I feel like for me, that's still a good price. $42 for that Knob Creek single barrel reserve. I know, 29's dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Russ Belt says, what's your favorite food paired with whiskey? Oh, that's a good question. Pro I mean, it's got to be barbecue for me. Like, um, I mean, specifically, like if I go to a restaurant, I order a whiskey and like, I'll just get a, a rack of ribs or something like that. You know, it just, it just whiskey and barbecue because of, I think the wood and the oak and the, the smokiness naturally that occurs in the whiskey from the barrel char. I think it just plays so well together. Um, I've had, I have had, I can't, like I, I've had certain foods where I've drank whiskey and then I have the food or vice versa. And it's just like, oh, it, you, usually once you have the food and then you take the whiskey, it's like, that's disgusting. I can't do that. But I can't, no, nothing comes to the top of my head of exactly like w what pairing was the most disgusting. You know, I'd have to really think about that. But usually like if I make myself, if I grill myself a nice steak or make, throw some barbecue on the grill or something, I'll grab a glass of whiskey. Like that, that just match made in heaven, match made in heaven. Absolutely. Asparagus. I've been on, okay, I know I'm getting off track here, but I've been on a big asparagus kick lately. Grilled asparagus. It, just salt, pepper, and garlic is all you need. You know, it's still healthy that way. You don't load it up with butter. And then, like, a little, little glass of whiskey next to it. She. So good. Delicious. Mmm. That's not drinking that hot. It's not. <laughs> First sip I took, I was like, whoa, that drink hot. Um, shit, Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike Meyer, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, I'm butter. The butter. Butter with asparagus. Mm. Rye with asparagus. Ooh. Mm. Opening up all these avenues. Look at that. Michael C says, just started on rye. My first was Old Forester Rye. Really liked. What should I try next? So Old Forester Rye is 100 proof, Mike. Can I call you Mike? Can I call you Mike? Thanks, bud. Um, 100 proof, was it good? Was that too hot? Was it not hot enough? Was the flavor good? Um, we were just talking about Pikesville. And honestly, for like 15 bucks more, 
if you're okay with the proof, or if you live in a very hot climate where you're okay adding a, adding a rock to it, go Pikesville, man. It's not that big of a gamble, and if you don't like it, you can make cocktails out of it. If you can get rare breed rye, which I still haven't tried, so I can't make the recommendation, but I'd say that, you know, rare breed rye or Pikesville are probably going to be the two, I think. Just for me. Jim's saying stag for the win. It could happen, man. It, it could happen. Different night. Different strokes for different folks. Oh, okay. This smells nice. The second you take that top, the second, the second you take that top down, the second you take that top down, baby. <sighs> baby, uh, that that's just barrel char and like whipped vanilla ice cream. Whew. Rust Belt says that wall looks awesome. Thank you, man. Did you build it? I did actually. Um, I mean, I had help, but um, yeah, we put the shelves up. My wife actually designed the shelf location. Um, and we filled bottles in after that. It's actually just paneling, wood paneling. Um, but the shelves, they were they were a pain, and I still have to reinforce some. So this is really nice. This is a lot of brown sugar, a lot of barrel char. I love finding some of that, some barrel char, man. I love finding some barrel char. In my whiskey. Makes me happy. I don't mean physically finding, I mean like finding it in my nose or taste it. <laughs> Drizzle some balsamic on those. Eh. Hell yeah. Barrel char and vanilla ice cream. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. We are on the same wavelength, my brother. That, that's where my mind goes when I. I don't know if it is. You know, I don't know if it is. Spencer Mav, how are you doing? Had to pick up some Eagle Bear store pick bottles that just showed up today. Got two of the last eight. Hey, good for you, man. I'm glad you found them. Eagle Bear picks almost never show up here, so they are extremely rare, hard to get. So if you can get them, you got to get them like you can, you know. Um, hang on, guy. Guy says, if I ever do YouTube, it would be food pairing with whiskey. Ribs and Knob Creek. Shit would be good. I'd watch. I'd watch. For some reason, Guy, I just feel like you would be a grill master. I, like that's, I picture Guy with like a bottle of whiskey parked in front of the grill and like barbecue pit, pit boss. You know, isn't that like a show pit boss? One of them pit bosses. You, you'd have to send me barbecue. If you started that channel, you'd have to send me barbecue. <laughs> I don't know how that would work with the mail, but... No luck finding Elijah Craig Brewer from Cali. Man, it's hit or miss, Brett, like in Michigan here. I mean, sometimes it's it's all over, and other times, like right now, I could go to one of my local places and get a bottle. Um, I already have, yeah, of the, actually, the B release, so. But it just depends, you know, it's some place, sometimes it's just so hard to find. Mm. Rust Belt says, do you pair cigars with whiskey ever? I have, like, Two or three cigars a year, honestly, probably. So, not a, I'm not a huge cigar guy, you know. I would I wouldn't be the one to ask about that. Obviously, a lot of you are here from um, Bourbon Junkies channel, you know. Dan and Sean are huge cigar guys, and uh, they're the ones to ask about the pairing. I'm sure a lot of you in here know you know pairings, but I do know whiskey and cigar goes great together, um, and coffee and cigars. But yeah, I'm just not a huge cigar guy. Yeah, I already have a big vice, <laughs> whiskey, so <laughs> if I can avoid another vice, because I know if I if I was to start obsessing about cigars, I would go down this rabbit hole, and I would do the same thing, like I, like Dan and Sean are doing now, they're, you know, on their live streams, they're reviewing cigars and whiskey, and it's like, I, I already spent enough money on whiskey, you know, that, that's how I feel. <laughs> I wonder if putting gummy bears in bourbon would be as solid as rum and gumby bears. Rum and gummy bears. Uh, sorry, rum and gummy bears. I always thought it was vodka and gummy bears. I feel like in college we always did like vodka soaked um, worms. What the hell do you call those things? Gum gummy worms. Gummy. <laughs> Duh. Gummy worms. Yeah, we used to do that. Trev, how you doing? Good to see you, bud. 
Good to see ya. Rummy bears in college. Okay, yeah. I mean, rum is easier to drink than vodka. I always hated those vodka gummy bears, gummy bears and gummy worms because it literally just tastes like vodka. Like they, the gummy bears don't retain any of their flavor. You know, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not really a non brown spirit guy, you know, I've had a couple vodkas, honestly, that are good. Um, the vodka out of Valentine distilling, probably the best mouthfeel I've ever had on a vodka. Um, and I don't, again, I don't drink vodka straight or anything like that. I mean, if I'm going to have it, it's going to be in a Bloody Mary. So, Sour Patch Kids and Sparkling Wine. Now that, that, I mean, that, that would be probably pretty good. I don't see how that could be bad at all. Nick Vol says, if you had the chance... Would you buy the new Stag Junior Batch 14 or the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof? Without question, the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. Not even a, not even a question. Always get that. Um, it's way, it, maybe not for you, but for me, it's way harder to find than Stag Junior. Never seen an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Or, never seen an E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. Um, I've known some stores that got them. I was not the one that received them, unfortunately. But um, Stag Jr., I've had more luck with. So for me, it'd be... I've always said, if there's one whiskey that's going to be added to BTAC, or that could be a BTAC, it's that whiskey, in my experience. Um, E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, I think, is the closest thing to BTAC you're going to find. Period. I, 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 like, I like it that much myself. Um, Stag Jr. is not on that level. Even the really good batches. You know, I put I put batch 12 and batch 13 against the 2019 George C. Stag. And for me, the 2019 George C. Stag, which is the weaker batch, still, it, it was still, it had more depth. Like, it just had more depth than Stag Jr. did. More depth, more complexity. That's another one, Peter. That is another one. Blanton straight from the barrel is, <laughs> it's one in more blinds than I, it's one in like three different blinds I've done. Not Not even knowing it was included at all um and it's one like three blinds so that is one that could be b tech as well i think that and the barrel proof very good very good stuff hey cheers man brothers of the dream gotta take off for dinner cheers man have a good night thanks for coming in oh jolly ranchers and zima <sighs> let me ask you this so like i we all have Probably some story of like high school or college. Richie Z in the house. How you doing, brother? Um, where you you had this? You had your cheap whiskey, or no, not even whiskey, just cheap spirit that you got drunk on irresponsibly. It ha it happened. You know, it happened. Um, when I was in high school, it was Heaven Hill, great great bourbon, you know, whiskey making company. I had no idea at the time. Um, it was Heaven Hill vodka. It, that which is pure rubbing alcohol pure rubbing alcohol and then what was like so what was the alcohol that started you or like the first thing you had that you can't drink anymore because of the terrible experiences you've had mine's heaven hill vodka or five o'clock vodka and then what's the mixer that's my real question because like did you have a mixer that you would use that you threw up maybe a couple times and you're like I can't even drink that mixer any anymore Ryan Ainge how you doing good to see you. isn't all vodka rubbing all uh, virtually it really is mad dog mad dog oh man so the mixer I want to hear what the mixer is too so tell me what so-called vodka and orange juice can't drink screwdrivers this day exactly like that's the exact thing I'm talking about so for me it was vo that vodka you know heaven hill or five o'clock vodka and ruby red squirt, or ruby seven up, like seven up. Anything ruby red, I can't drink now because it just gives me nightmares. I swear to God, <laughs> swear to God. So, USMC Tech says Jim Beam White Label. Oh, really? I, I didn't drink any whiskey at all when I was younger. You know, Jaeger. Oh, I hate black licorice as it is, Greer. I don't know how anyone can even do that. I hate black licorice as it is. 
Tequila in general, can't stand the smell of it. Got sick out of my going away party when I left for boot camp. Tequila is a tough one too, because uh, yeah, tequila is such a distinct flavor. Um, I had a hard time even getting into good tequilas. Now I have a couple here. Rumple mints. Oh God, rumple mints. Don't even. Don't even. Tequila with tomato juice. Oh, just to, yeah, cheap tequila is so bad. You're right. But then when you move to good tequila, you're like, wow, this is what it should taste like all along. What was I thinking? Smirnoff and Red Bull. Hmm. I used to get, we used to get those, those huge Smirnoff ices or like a 12 pack of Smirnoff ice. And you just had the, you wouldn't be drunk at all, but you'd have the worst stomach ache in the world after drinking like five, six of them. It was awful. A lot of people can't do Bloody Marys at all. Man, I love me a good Bloody Mary, man. Especially extra spicy, loaded. Loaded up with stuff, you know? That's, that's what I like. Pop off vodka. Oh yeah. Pop off. <laughs> I forget how many vodkas there are there I don't like. Used to buy purple passion for the ladies. <laughs> oh. yeah, Long Island iced teas. Yeah, you don't realize um, how much alcohol is actually in that. Every type of spirit pretty much. Goldschlager. And peppermint schnapps, man, is just the peppermint schnapps is the worst. Stephen Bolton says with bacon, oh yes. Bloody Marys makes me want to go on vacation. Like I think Bloody Marys, I think mimosas, like I just makes me want to go on vacation so bad. Ugh. Jeffrey Wax says I wish I discovered quality liquor earlier in life. I know in my prime drinking years. Then again, could my water survive? I know mine couldn't have. If I had known what I know now, even my like freshman or whatever, when I turned 21 in college. I'd have been able to find some great whiskeys, that's for sure. But, no, I wouldn't have had the money to survive them. Burnett's Watermelon Vodka, Trev says. Oh, Burnett's. What, what was it with Burnett's? Like, they've got every flavor under the sun. They have, like, orange juice vodka. They have grapefruit vodka. They've got mint vodka. they got everything. <sighs> Yuck. Yuck. Thank goodness we've all moved on to whiskey, huh? Mm. That stuff is wonderful. That is some wonderful, wonderful stuff. Mm. <laughs> Jay Armstrong. Had a friend's mom find out our vodka stash, replaced it with water. We thought the margarita mixture worked great to cover the taste. <laughs> oh, that's great. My parents thought they were always sneaky. They would, they, they didn't think we'd see, but they always wrote little, you know, little lines on the vodka bottle, like where, we know where, it, we know where it is. You know, we know where the line is. So just add a little water, just add a little water to that bad boy. Every time you go to take more, you don't get as much of a buzz, but... <laughs> No, parents are much smarter than you think. Once I realized I have my own kids, you know, it's like my three-year-old will try to trick me into stuff. And it's like, mm, no, it was not your one-year-old brother that did that. I know it was you. Don't you lie to me. After trying five, four is just kind of a letdown on the nose. I don't think the proof is there. I don't think the proof is as high. Um, it's not giving me that richness, that fullness. It's still got really nice, like classic bourbon notes. They just taste, or they smell much more subtle, you know, much more subtle. Hmm. That's a good idea. Dickie Dad says we keep the vodka in the freezer so we'd know if the kids got into it. If it's frozen. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. It's not like bourbon where it should be room temperature or, you know, a little bit cooler. I like that. Hmm. Well, that's good. You know, lacked a little bit on the nose, but I'll tell you what, that is good. That's got some good flavor. That's literally like just a classic bourbon. 
to me. Wonderful. Wonderful stuff. Five and four are both good. Five and four are both good. Let me know what you guys think is going to win this blind tasting. And can anyone guess that we're about to move on to the one that I think, I think is the wild card. I got, we got to figure out what this is. I think it's this one, but I don't know for sure. Stag Jr. for the win, Nick says. Do love me Stag Jr. I mean, there's fruitiness there, but this just this just screams youth to me. I don't know. I'm probably going to just be wrong if she put like William Ruweller in here or something. <laughs> Honestly, look like an idiot. I don't know. I'm getting youth, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's not. It's not a terrible nose. It's not. It's not a bad nose. It's just. I think in this lineup, it just sticks out as more youthful. You know. Oh, Anthony says, Chris, Texas, we just started getting a smoke wagon. We tried it. I've tried it. Um, I've had it sent to me in a couple blinds. ADHD whiskey actually sent it to me in a blind. And um, wow. And I've had a couple people who have bottles locally that I've been able to try at tastings with them. The, I've had a couple single barrel picks. I think one was a 12-year pick. Incredible. Incredible MGP. I mean, really. That's all right, Ryan. Go. Time to work, you know. Work, work never stops, so... Roscoe Pico trains as Elijah Great Barrel Proof. Yeah. Definitely could win. This is kind of um, a sawdust. Sawdusty slash dusty corn. Yeah, Anthony, if you can get if you can get this any of the single barrel, like barrel proof picks, or even just not quite barrel proof, but it's just classic, delicious MGP is what it is. It's MGP done well. It, that's what it is. Hmm. It tastes. It tastes new, makey. It does. It tastes new. I mean, it's a. It tastes like a really, really good new make. If that makes sense, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I'm really curious to find out what that is now because I, I can't think off the top of my head of what it might be that's in my bar other than New Rift, but I, New Rift, I tend to get a lot more spice, it seems like. So, mm. we'll see. We will see. I got a lot of people saying different stuff. I had some Stag Jr., Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Richie Z thinks it could be Old Forest or Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Anthony Orlando's going with Knob Creek. Ugh. Aged barrel strength MGP is freaking phenomenal. Never have there been more true words put into YouTube chat in the history of YouTube chat, in my opinion. ADHD whiskey is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Cannot wait to see, by the way, Matt, what's going to happen with this Bardstown bourbon thing. Like, if they don't choose you as the ultimate ambassador, it's going to be... There's going to be an uprising, you know, there's going to be another movement happening. That's for sure. Ooh, now coming off, this, trying things in different order makes all the difference too. So now we're trying two after we just tried three. Remember how I said there was like no sweetness in this at all? And that was coming off the back of one. This is all like smarty candy sweet now. Smarty candy sweet. Du still that dusty, dusted nuts. Old nuts. Tastes like old nuts. A lot more sweetness. That is so weird. So weird the order you try stuff can make that much of a difference, honestly. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it, it drinks like uh, it doesn't give me as much proof. So it's drinking more like the regular or the 
the Knob Creek 12 year 100 proof. That's the way it's drinking right now. Really good. It's still really good. I mean, not, none of these are bad. And I won't even say three is bad. I just think it's youthful. Youthful. Um, what's the next big distillery to go non-age statement, if you had to guess? Are you saying which expression is going to go non-age statement? It's a good question. Stood outside ESPN headquarters today with a picket sign reading whiskey tasting as a sport. <laughs> the Ocho. The Ocho, man. Heck yeah, you're ready to go. Heck yeah. Uh, next is still to go non-age statement. I'm going to say, like, if they're going to remove an age statement from a whiskey, I'm guessing it's going to be Eagle Rare. Because they already took the single barrel off of that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it eventually lost its age statement. You know. But I, age statements, I feel like, are starting to come back versus losing an age statement. So, I, I don't know. I mean, at least with Jim Beam, their 12-year, 15-year, 9-year came back on their regular Knob Creek. So, I feel like it's coming back more than it is going away. And... I'll tell you what, which is really interesting, overseas, um, other countries, they are huge on age statements, huge. So if these companies like Wild Turkey, um, a lot of their products they sell overseas are age dated, like 13 year, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Like, And that's not available in the States because we don't care as much about age statements. At least that's the perception. Um, but I think it's an interesting time right now because... I don't know what the sales look like on the Knob Creek 12, Knob Creek 15, but I bet you they're going to use that kind of as a baseline and be like, hey, how did this do? You know, did the age statement make a big difference in sales? Were, were we able to sell more because of the age statement? And other companies may start following suit. Could happen. I mean, I think it's more about beautifying your whiskey at this point, like either finishing it in something is what everyone's trying to do making it bottled and bond. So it's got that cool bottle and bond on, in the name, you know, it's just anything to stand out on the shelf from the, the bottle next to it is what everyone's going for. I feel like, so I'm going to get another sip of this. We got 10 minutes left. Then Jason's going to his two year celebration. Ooh, thank you guys for hanging out tonight. It's gotta be, it's gotta be Knob Creek. It's gotta be Knob. It's got Knob written all over it. But I shouldn't guess because I got. I just gotta go buy what I like the most. What I like the most. All right, let's go back to number one. Hot damn. Hot damn. That's the one that spicy you meet the ball. Anybody heard of Iron Root in Texas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Iron Root. Fantastic. They really do, man. They really do. Iron Root is one of the, I mean, it's the Texas whiskey I'm most, whiskey company I'm most excited about. Um, wonderful products that I've had from them. Haven't had a bad one yet, honestly. Nick, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate that. I love just hanging out on Wednesdays. You know, I do. I love it. Richie Z, 999 Super Chat, doesn't even leave a comment. Like a boss. Like a boss. Thank you, man. Richie, Richie's been here since I had like literally probably 100 subscribers or less. So, um... Always love it when Richie comes and hangs out. Thank you so much, man. Iron Root is constantly looking to expand their footprint, so Jake, don't be surprised if um, it's gonna. I mean, it's gonna show up. It will show up very soon. Jay Armstrong, that'd be awesome, man. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much for offering. I appreciate that. All right. Wow. <laughs> I 
It's got some heat. Whew! It's got some heat, but that is freaking good. Oh, man. This is going to be hard to decide. This is going to be hard to decide. <laughs> Jamie says, if Knob Creek says a single barrel Storbucks are going away because of the success of the 12 and the 15 year, I'm going to riot. Just in that voice. That's exactly how you said it. It could happen, man. I mean, it, it could it could really happen. Um, I'm thinking, don't worry about it yet. I think Knob Creek has a, I think Jim Beam has a huge amount of whiskey. I know they have a huge amount of whiskey. So there's, at the moment, there's been no talks about it going away yet. So just hold on so far. Let's not freak out till it happens. But I will riot with you if it does. Tour the top four. You talking about uh, touring the distilleries? Or are you talking to someone else? I've toured, well, no, I did a tasting at Heaven Hill, toured Jim Beam, toured Buffalo Trace, toured Old Forester. Uh, they're all wonderful. The, they they all do it up so big. They do it up so big. You know, it's like, it's bourbon country. You're in the zone. You're in, you're in, you're in heaven. You're in whiskey heaven, you know? Ugh. Kilko? Almost have 100 subs. Everyone everyone, go subscribe to Kill Call right now, please. Let's get him to 100 right now. Thank you very much. Put together a group. Group tour. What we got to do is set up a tasting. So someone get in good with their local store owner. Let's do a store pick. We'll do, you know, we'll do a, a store pick. We'll choose like five, six people in chat. We'll all go do a store pick together. That'd be a great time. I would love to do a store pick down in Kentucky. <laughs> Greer Greer says great job rare breed for the w never mind <laughs> oh Greer that reminds me I still have to put out the results of my bracket challenge I still didn't put the results out so um, bracket challenge results will go up in the next few days okay it really will I promise patrons I really promise I just keep I keep forgetting to put it out Guy Davis actually reminded me the other day so thank you all thank you all for showing Kilko some love thank you all right, let's order these. Jason's about to go live, so. Mm. Now I got to choose between these two. Um... Oh man, getting more difficult. I think I like, yeah, I think I like that one. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Ah! Yeah, all right, let's do the reveal. So I wanna save what I think is the wild card for the end so I can find out what it is. So we'll start with my fourth choice because the wild card was my least favorite tonight, okay? Wild card was my least, least favorite. Got my results. Thank you to the wife for hooking us up. Um, so, uh, number four, 1920. A little surprising. Um, I love 19. I mean, this lineup again was loaded. So I, I um, I can't I can't remember where this fared in my finals. I think it got third. So not that much different, but. This is your everyday bourbon. Like Old Forester 1920 is just your everyday bourbon. Good stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. I know. No! <laughs> uh, my third favorite choice, Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve. I mean, that was the nutty. That was like clearly Knob Creek. It was clearly Knob Creek, but um, compared to these other two in the lineup, at least, um, I couldn't put it ahead. Not today. Not today. Now, this is what really it makes me curious, though, are these top two. Because I think, let's just look. 
Sample one was my second choice. One was Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Stag Jr. won today. Wow. Stag Jr. won today. Look at that. Look at that butte. That's beautiful. The Stag Jr., man. I won today. Um, it just depends on the day. It just depends on the day. Um, what? Okay, I just read what my wife put in here. She really did F with me a little bit. Number five. This is what she wrote on here. Bell Mead cast strength plus mostly peerless bourbon. Bellmead cast strength plus mostly peerless bourbon. So she put a splash of Bellmead cast strength and peerless bourbon. I would have guessed just peerless bourbon based on the notes we were describing. What in the what in the hell? How, how am I supposed to pick that out? There's no way. Well, mostly peerless bourbon. I would say that's mostly what came through on the nose and palate. So, a Bellmead cast drink that I'm not getting the I'm not getting the MGP coming through. It's it's youthful. It's a little youthful, but I'll tell you what, though, I've had I've had some single barrel rye and single barrel bourbon expressions from Peerless that are out of this world. Um, regular bourbon, almost every time I've had it, I've just been underwhelmed, unimpressed. And it's interesting because I actually yesterday just put out a review of this, which is really weird. She picked that bourbon out of all these. But I put out a review of that yesterday, so pretty cool. But it makes sense. I didn't really quite understand. Gotcha! <laughs> you, 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 SOB. How dare you? Stay Jr. took it, though. You know, Stay Jr. took it, so it was a good time. Just a splash. A splash of MGP. That's all you need in your life. Um. All right. Well, that was good. That was fun, guys. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Um, let's drop a link for Jason if we could, please. I know y'all know who he is and where he is, but let's go, um, let's go over and say hi. He has a huge stream tonight, so, um, I hear my boys going nuts upstairs right now. It's probably really loud on the camera, so I'm gonna have to put them to bed first before I can jump on Jason's. Hopefully, they'll be in bed by, in time, by the time I can get back down here, so, um, I love you all. Thank you so much. Um, there will not be a live stream next Wednesday. I am going to be busy. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I'll shoot for um, streaming that maybe that weekend, later that weekend, that night. Otherwise, the following Wednesday, we'll be here. Okay? We'll be here, and we'll have a couple more reviews coming in the meantime. So, I love you all. Thank you so much. I'll see you very soon.